Remember in the graphical solution method, we have examined uh, the changes in the solution when we changed an objective function, coefficient or a right-hand side value. And that was, hopefully, uh, it gave us a lot of insights of, our, of the uh, model itself. Uh, what we did is, in fact, it's called the sensitivity analysis, which is what? It's a study of the changes in your solution when one of the parameters change, or sometimes uh, more than one parameter change. Now, what's important of that is this, uh, that whenever you have a sensitivity report, you don't need to change to modify the model each time one of the parameters change. All what you have to do is to look at your sensitivity report and then you will be able to predict what happened to your solution all right this is very very important because companies that uh, build very complex models <clears throat> it would be very time consuming for them to keep changing them each time one parameter change and these happen every day and every hour so all what you have to do look at your sensitivity report so what we're going to do is <clears throat> We're going to, I'm going to explain for you the components of a sensitivity report that we have. I showed you how to generate it in the previous demo. All right, so before you can start using your sensitivity report, you need to understand these elements. What does this term mean? What does that term mean? So let's do that. All right, so let's learn how to, um, how to read a sensitivity report that is automatically generated by Excel once you use Solver to solve your model. Okay, so um, I showed you very quickly the sensitivity report when I generated it during my demo. Uh, and I told you that it created a new sheet for you. And here we go, this is it. So we can see that in order to, to be able to um, to read it, we need to understand what this term means. What's that? What, what, what do we have here? Allowable increase, allowable decrease, shadow price, etc. But before I, I um, start with the difficult part, let's start with the um, easy part. First of all, final value. I'm sure you, you can tell what are these because I showed you the solution, right? This is the optimal solution. What you see in the final value this is your optimal solution. So if I showed you only that, and I told you that I solved this model, tell me what's the optimal solution. All what you have is to read these values, and that's it, you have it, okay? So now let's see what's a reduced cost. Uh, sorry, before that, let, let, I, I just missed one thing. A, uh, our sensitivity report comprises two tables. The first table is about the adjustable cells, which means the decision variables. So if anything about the decision variables values or the objective coefficient, this is where you look. This table, the other table is about the constraints. So if you have any change in the constraint, this is where you look to answer the question. All right. So let's first uh, uh, define a reduced cost. What's a reduced cost? Um, what do we notice here? We notice that we have a zero and a zero here, and then a value here. And it's not a coincidence that I have a zero and a zero for the values of the decision variables that have positive values, or I mean they are bigger than zero. In other words, these are my solution. These are the two decision variables that were part of my solution, and they have a reduced cost of zero. While this one, that was not part of my solution, it has a value for its reduced cost. Why? Because why we did not, or why Solver did not choose that? Because it was not economic for us to, to use it. It's going, this, this uh, product going to exhaust my resources without giving enough profit for me. So it rather went for choosing only to produce economy and standard okay, that uh, uh, consume less resources, or I mean proportional to their profit, it will be less, so that, uh, that's why they are part of the solution. Okay, so what's that 24? We are saying that if we can increase the profit contribution of the DLOX, okay, which was 135 by 24, Okay, the deluxe type will be part of solution. So this is the first definition of the reduced cost. The other one is this. 
Sometimes you don't want to, to change that. You cannot change it for many reasons, but you want to enforce, you want to force this decision or this product to be part of solution. You can do that, of course, but you can now make sure that with forcing one unit of this decision variable that was not part of a solution into your solution, you'll be losing $24. So this is the second definition of a reduced cost. It's how much you are penalizing your, uh, your optimal value by forcing one unit to be part of your solution. And this is linear. So if you force 20, 10 of these, uh, you'll be penalized by 240. Now, the second part is this. It's called the range of optimality. What's that? Look, this is my optimal solution right it's 80 120 and 0 if i change and these are our original objective coefficients i can change 63 okay between or i can increase 63 up to 12 so up to 75 and i can decrease it up to 15 so i can decrease it by 2 by 10 by 15.5 and I'm sure that this optimal solution does not change. That's why it's called the range of optimality. And the same uh, applies for this and the same apply for that. All right. So I can change 95. Let's say um, the, the profit contribution of a standard became 120. All right. It is. So I have added 25 which is within that allowable increase so i don't need to rerun the model again i know that for sure that my the same optimal solution will still result but of course the optimal value will change when i change that to uh, 120 then the optimal value because this remained the same my optimal value then will have 80 times 63 plus 120 times the new objective coefficient which was 120 in my example all right now you notice something like that in excel or excel uses this notation to just uh, describe a very large number all right now the second table it's about constraints and also before i start with shadow price and the other part let me talk about the final value here what does it mean this is about the right hand side value so this final value is what it's when you plug these values on the left hand side so these are the left hand side values in other words these are the used resources or to be general this is the value of the left hand side because it's not all the left hand side does not always mean a resource all right uh, so now let's go for the shadow price. What's the shadow price? Also here we can make an observation that I have a value uh, bigger than zero here and there. And we notice that this is applicable for the two binding constraint. How did I know that these two binding? Because the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. The same for here, left hand side equal to the right hand side. They have a value while the, the constraint that's not binding, it has a zero shadow price. What the shadow price? It is the improvement on in the object in the uh, objective function or the optimal value that happens with one unit increase in the right hand side of that constraint. So in other words, let's take the fans. If I had one more fan, my uh, optimal value, my optimal profit would have increased by $31. If I had 10 more fans, would have increased by $310 but what's the limit for that applicability for the shadow price here we go this is the limit so what I was saying that if I had 10 if I had 20 I could have increased you see this is my original number of fans 200 I know that without rerunning the model again without without solving it again if I had 280 fans Okay, up to 280 fans, I know what would happen to my optimal value. It would increase by 60, by 80 times the dual price, by 31. I don't have to solve it again. But if I had 90, I cannot tell because this is my allowable increase. This is called the range of feasibility. 
okay which is the range within which the right hand side value can change and i can tell what happened by reading the dual price so in other words this is a range of, applica of applicability of the dual price okay also here you can see this this means a very large number all right what we're going to do next is we're going to do a uh, exercise where we will be using a the sensitivity report to answer questions that managers sometimes ask